Dead Side is a hardcore multiplayer shooter with large open world and wide gameplay possibilities. The developer of the game, Bad Pixel, was kind enough to provide me with two keys, one for myself and one for a good buddy, Uncle Sam's Devil, and he and I jumped into the game for a couple of hours, and today I'm excited to share with you my first impressions of this game so you understand exactly what the game offers and you can decide whether or not it's right for you. First and foremost, Dead Side is a hardcore survival multiplayer shooter with crafting aspects to it. It takes place over a vast open world with a 225 square kilometer map that is incredibly realistic, beautiful, and immersive. It's set in a post-apocalyptic landscape, but it's not infested with magical creatures or zombies. Instead, the focus is on realism, and the developers attempt to evoke a sense of desperateness that might emerge in a true apocalyptic situation. If we look at the game itself, it's developed by this very small Russian studio called Bad Pixel, and from what I can tell, this is their first project. Right now, it's on sale on Steam for $20, and it's in early access as of April of this year, 2020. As I look at the charts, right now it has 1,200 concurrent players on average over the past 30 days. That's ebbed and flow with the pace of updates as they roll out. And the reviews are mostly positive overall, but the recent reviews are very positive. My buddy Uncle Sam's Devil and I jumped into the game, spent about two and a half hours exploring, surviving, fighting, and crafting so that we could get a good understanding of exactly what this game has to offer. The session itself was pretty cool, and I feel like we got to touch a lot of the things that the developers about. So we spawned in, we immediately encountered several pretty exciting PvP scenarios. We managed to scrounge up some weapons and some loot, and of course we got ganked by significantly higher level and more experienced characters as we tried to explore the map. We learned about the mechanics of the game, and we even encountered some mobs and managed to clear out several NPC areas, get in some pretty exciting gunfights, have some wild interactions with other players, both in a PvP nature and in a social setting, and all in all had a really good time. The first thing that struck me when I spawned into the game is how beautiful it was. The scenery is absolutely gorgeous, the game is built on the Unreal Engine, and the developers have done a great job not only optimizing the game to run really well, but despite that optimization, still delivering a very cinematic and beautiful experience. The lighting in particular was especially gorgeous, and at the twilight of the morning and in the evening, you can really get a feel for how amazing that sun can look as it peeks through the vegetation of those high trees as you look across the rural landscape. And the landscape is rural. It's set in a fictional location, and it's dotted with small villages that each sprawl out and offer plenty of locations for you to explore and loot and become immersed in. There's a day and night cycle that can be modified within the server settings, and as Uncle Sam's Devil and I played, we experienced one full day cycle and one full night cycle and had an absolute blast in both of those environments. Whenever the sun goes down, it does feel incredibly eerie. It gives you a sense of desperation, makes you move a little bit slower, listen a little bit more carefully, and wish that you had picked up that flashlight that you might have bypassed for a lack of a slot to keep it in your inventory during the day. All in all, this scenery, this lighting, this gorgeous rural setting, the amazing rolling hills, the beautiful day and night cycle delivers an incredibly immersive experience that I would recommend to anyone who enjoys a survival exploration sort of experience. The game itself is pretty simple as far as mechanics are concerned. It would be easy for a hardcore shooter and survival game like this to deliver a really complex experience that becomes incredibly difficult to learn and understand, but instead what I found that it was very quickly learned by both my buddy Sam's Devil and myself. The crafting system is pretty intuitive, you don't need to go googling recipes, instead it's pretty interesting that they just place those recipes directly into your inventory and all you need to do is find the stuff and then click a button to craft whatever item that you're going to be using, whether that's clothing or equipment or bandages or any construction materials. There's also safe zones on the map. So whereas in a game like Escape from Tarkov, you have gear fear that prevents you from taking your best loot into the fight. The safe zones in Dead Side were a welcome mechanic that sprawl across about a kilometer square on two different locations of the map, allowing the player to move into that safe zone where he can't be attacked by other players. 
in the safe zones are vendors, two of them to be exact, which makes it really simple. One of them sells the equipment and ammunition and weapons that you're going to need to fight, and the other one sells the provisions that are going to keep you alive. It's a very simple system. Both of them will take whatever loot that you scrounge in the world and purchase it from you so that you can earn more currency that you can use to purchase more items. And neither of them will try to rip you off. So the price from one vendor to the next is generally the same and doesn't introduce this unnecessarily complex meta that would otherwise require you to do a ton of research to make sure that you're getting the best deal all the time. No, instead, the developers at Bagpixel elected to give you a simple experience up front that is not only immersive, but is also relatively easy to navigate. In addition to having a vendor and a safe space where you're not going to be engaged by other players, there's also a stash option. So if you don't yet have all of the tools and the construction materials you would need to build a base to keep your stuff safe, you can store it in a locker in these safe zones and then come back to it each time you return to that same server and get the same loot that you've been collecting over all of the different raids that you've done. There's other players in those same spaces where you can have these wild social interactions, you can talk and squad up with other people, and you can decide whether or not you trust the other players on your server or whether they would just wait until you leave the safe zone to shoot you in the back. There's also base building and construction, and anytime you have a construction mechanic, a lot of challenges are introduced in the way of how you protect your base that you spend so much time building. We've seen it in other games, and so far it seems that Deadside has taken a pretty interesting and unique way of going about solving that problem. First, a player can claim land so that it will actually allow them to begin building on it. And then once they begin building on that land and they ultimately complete their construction and their base, and then they can put a lock on the door to that base that has a pin code on it that will prevent other players from getting inside. Right now, if you build a base with a pin on it, other players simply aren't going to be able to get in, but the developers do say that sometime in the future they are going to introduce raiding mechanics, but they promise not to let those mechanics become a passive system where all of your belongings can be destroyed or stolen by other players while you're not online. Indeed, it does seem that they are committed to making a fair system that is fun for all and easy to enjoy. Deadside offers a pretty simple social system. It's not very robust. You can't make these crazy guilds or anything like that yet, but it is a really easy game to enjoy with your friends. Uncle Sam's Devil and I immediately jumped in, and after we coordinated a place to link up on the map, as soon as we arrived to the same location, all you have to do is walk up to your buddy, and then you can invite him to the squad, and once you're in the same squad as your friend, you'll remain in that squad despite either of you dying, and it allows you to see one another on the map, and then use a squad chat in text and also proximity voice as you move around the map. Speaking of the map, navigation is really simple. You spawn with a complete map and you know exactly where you are and you can put waypoints on the map. There's actually up to five and they're different colors. And as you place them on the map, it adds something to your UI in game. So if I drop a little waypoint on a distant village, it'll pop up in game and allow me to immediately orient myself and begin moving in that direction, which is a nice balance between the hardcore mechanics that this game inherently has and the more easy to access and fun and enjoyable mechanics that make an experience like this a little bit easier to get into. I was also really impressed by the AI. So sure, there's potentially up to 49 other players on whatever server that you're in, but the AI themselves are actually really, really good. And I'm not sure from a coding perspective what the developers did to make them so good, but I felt challenged by the AI and they were dangerous and I was very careful about how I approached them. It felt a lot like pretty good scavs in Escape from Tarkov. So as you engage them, they'll attempt to move forward and actually push you. I mean, there's a radius that they'll pursue you, but the way they move around within that radius is actually pretty impressive. And they'll kind of pie corners and move until they can create a geometry that will allow them to fire and then quickly engage and then break contact whenever they feel that they've been beaten. So I was really enjoying those experiences. So even if you're not in a PvP engagement, there's a lot of fun to be had and there's great loot that you can be earning if you're willing to go face these incredibly challenging AI. But the game in reality is all about PvP. With 50 players on a server, there's going to be a ton of PvP encounters. And sure enough, we had every encounter that you can imagine. From getting ganked while we were in our menu screens because we didn't have the discipline to move into the shadows and take a knee and make sure that we weren't going to be discovered, to choosing to take a fight that we knew we could win and then barely surviving. We had every experience that you can imagine when it comes to PvP and I can only 
imagine that later in the game as you get better weapons, more armor, and more friends to play with that the PvP encounters would be even more exciting. Yes, it gets your blood pumping, it gets the adrenaline going, and it's precisely the experience that people who crave these hardcore shooters and survival kind of games are going to enjoy. We had exciting encounters with players, good, bad, and ugly. We already talked about PvP, but beyond that, there was hilarious encounters. One comes to mind in particular, where Sam's Devil and I were in the loft of this barn in the middle of the night trying to loot, and all of a sudden, this guy comes up the ladder, and the dude's completely naked, and he starts talking to us, and we panic, end up hanging out with him and his friend for a while, and then ultimately leave. Later on, we met another guy. He seemed to be the badass of the server. Tons of loot, tons of weapons, tons of guns. And he was really generous. He kind of told us the ins and outs of the game and ended up actually donating a really nice submachine gun to Uncle Sam's devil and a really badass helmet to me. He told us to keep it in our locker so that we didn't lose it in a silly raid, but he acted like a mentor and he taught us the ropes. And it was really nice to see that there's members of the community who want a great PvP experience, but that are also willing to teach you the ropes whenever you want to learn the game. Now, while the game was a blast and we had a ton of fun and I'm happy to recommend it to you, there's definitely still some things that need to work. Number one in my mind is the gunplay. The guns look good and they feel okay, but it definitely feels like a $20 early access game. And if you go in expecting it to feel like Insurgency Sandstorm, you're going to be disappointed. This game is about PvP, but it's also about survival and the environment. And naturally, in a game like this, particularly one that offers third person, the gunplay just isn't going to be top-notch. And I understand that, but nonetheless, it needs a little bit of improvement, it needs some additional animations added to it, it needs to feel better as you move through the environment with those weapons. There's also some stuff going on with the time to kill and the hit detection. I could have sworn time and again that I had the crosshairs centered up on players to fire pretty high caliber single shot bolt action weapons into the center mass of those targets for them to just keep coming at me. Similarly, as I took damage, I managed to soak up a ton of bullets before ever actually going down. And so I feel like the developers should consider taking a look at how much damage players are actually taking, how long it takes to kill them, and just doing an overall balance adjustment for all of the weapons, hit detection, and hit boxes in the game. That's a big ask for a small indie studio that's still in the heat of development, but I think over time it will improve. And frankly, I still had a great time and it really didn't detract from it in a way that would cause me to not recommend it to you. It needs more customization options, and when we look at the roadmap, yeah, there's a ton of new weapons and customization options on the way, so I hesitated even to introduce this here, but nonetheless, I felt that it was something worth mentioning. Just recently, the addition of scopes appears to have changed a lot of the way that people play the game, and I even saw people using ACOGs and red dot sites to great effect, despite the fact that we didn't come across those on our own at any point during our session. A big one for me is the way a game sounds, and while the environment in this game sounds incredible, the proximity voice chat seems to work really well, the weapon sounds need some work. They sound hollow, there's not really a lot of reverb, and it just appears like the developers either used stock sounds or just haven't focused a lot of attention to it. But I also understand that this game is still relatively early in development and we can expect a more robust sound update sometime in the future. And of course, with any early access title, there's a few bugs here and there, but nothing that ultimately broke the game and caused us to quit. We had an amazing time. The roadmap looks incredibly promising with the developers saying that the map is only going to get bigger. There's more features on the way to include vehicles. If this all sounds fun to you, Deadside may be a great choice. If you're a player that enjoys hardcore tactical shooters, hardcore survival games, immersive experiences, and especially co-op gameplay because that is where Deadside truly shines, it's those interactions with your buddies as you explore this crazy environment, then I can recommend Deadside to you guys. It's 20 bucks. The developers are committed to the project, the future looks bright, and I am excited to continue to explore this game, and I hope that you will do so with me. Guys, if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to do that now, and if you've been subscribed for a while and you haven't yet made the next step to become a member of the channel, guys, you can do it for as little as 99 cents a month, and it makes a huge difference in motivating me to continue creating this content for you guys to consume. My name's Control Paris. I play the most immersive PC games in the whole world. This is Deadside, and I'll see you in the next one.